Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the University of Minnesota Extension Poultry Team's presentation of Getting Started with the Backyard and Small Flock Laying Hens. I am Colleen Carlson. I'm a local county extension educator in Carver and Scott County. I have been a long time chicken raisers of um, women who've raised chickens and um, my grandmother was famous for saving her egg money and making things go on the farm, as well as my great, great, great grandmother um, shared her chickens with her neighbors in a documented in a, a diary that we have from her. So that's wonderful. Joining me today is Wayne Martin, the University of Minnesota Extension Educator out of the St. Paul campus. He does all things small farms and he works uh, diligently with small uh, flock and poultry raisers, as well as Abby Noy. Shuft with, she is a biosecurity specialist within the University of Minnesota Extension and works very diligently on biosecurity issues and Abby is providing some technical service for us today. So um, welcome to our team and welcome to you for joining us today. This is a very basic beginning backyard chicken uh, laying hands production. Um, let's get started here. So we've all thought about and wanted to have chickens. If you live in a metro area or a small city, you may wanna check your local laws and ordinances before you even start preparing to have chickens. Some cities do not allow chickens. Some allow chickens, but no roosters. And some allow limited number of layers or hens. And then there's also guidance on what kind of a chicken coop you have, how big your run should be. So there's just a lot of considerations if you are um, for you to research before you begin a backyard chicken enterprise in the cities. Um, for all information, please call um, or visit your local city hall. Uh, these are written up in the ordinances, or if you're in a, in a county that has a local county extension educator, we can help you with that. So if you're in Carver and Scott County, I certainly can help you um, determine how many and where chickens are allowed in those two counties. So the first consideration we have is why do you wanna raise chickens? Do you wanna understand where your food comes from? Do you want a ready supply of eggs or meat? Is it something to teach your kids about um, agriculture or responsibility with daily chores. Chickens in the backyard setting can also be great pets or and or lawn ornaments. So take that all into consideration. I wanna give you a little bit of chicken vocabulary today, just so um, we're all on the same page and it will also help you interpret some of the ordinances and also purchasing chickens. You'll have a better background of what you're actually purchasing. Hey, Celine, we have a request that you tilt your camera a little bit more so that they could see your whole face. There you go. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so a chick is a baby chicken. A pullet is a young female. And for people who can only have hens in the, their backyards, you want to make sure that you order pullets. So a hen is an adult female. So um, about five months to six months of age. A rooster is an adult male chicken. That's the one that crows most often. And then a cockerel is a male chicken under one year of age. And when you're ordering chickens, they may ask you, do you want a straight run? That's a mixture of male and female chickens. And then brooder is a, is a heat source to start young um, chickens. And then broody is the maternal instinct for hens to set and or want to hatch their eggs. So for the chickens, pullets begin laying eggs at five to six months. And the production is the greatest for the first two years and it declines every year after. The other consideration with production hens is that at that two to three year stage, the eggs start to get larger and they don't always fit so nice in the egg cartons. It takes 25 hours to produce an egg. You won't get an egg a day, but almost. 
and the average life expectancy of a hen is three to eight years. We've had some people comment that they've been able to keep hens for 12 years, but they typically stop production in that third or fourth year. So what breed is right for you? What are some common breeds here in Minnesota that overwinter well? You might wanna consider the white leghorn. That's the most productive um, chicken and most feed efficient chicken that's out there. A Wyandotte, a Rhode Island Red, a Plymouth Rock, an Orpington are all good standard breeds of chickens that, that um, most of those are dual purpose. And I'll give you an example here. Then we have the Americana, the Easter Egger and Cochins. They are also popular here in Minnesota and do well in our winters. There's a lot of other fancy breeds that also do fine, but they're not as, as sturdy and need some special care in the winter. And that's based on my experience. So when you're looking at the breed of chicken that you wanna consider, here are some factors, and I'm gonna give you three different breeds here in the interest of time. And then you'll wanna analyze these um, based on what's available and then um, the color of egg that you want and then what the purpose of your chicken is gonna be. The white leghorn, they're excellent egg layers. They lay a white egg. They lay 250 to 300 eggs per year. They weigh about four and a half pounds. So they're a little lighter breed. They like to move about and they're good foragers. My experience with leghorns is that they can be a little flighty. Um, they're not as cuddly as some of the other breeds if you're looking for that a kind of pet, but they can all be trained. The Americana is great for long-term egg production. And I think I, my Americana is four years old and she's still laying strong. She still lays um, an egg every other day. They lay the green eggs. There's many different colors of Americanas. They're a dual purpose breed, which means that they can lay eggs, but they can also be used as a meat breed. So if you are a, back, a small flock owner and you get a straight run of these, you can, process and harvest the roosters in that five to six month range um, when they get to the weight that you want them to. Um, they're tolerant to a lot of climates. They're easy to handle. Um, this one too, she can be a little broody. Um, and if you want to try hatching your own eggs at home or let her do her natural thing, an Americana is, is a good selection. And Orpington, um, is another dual purpose breed that does really well here in Minnesota. They lay brown eggs. They can weigh up to eight pounds, so a little bit heavier. They're going to require more feed in the winter as well to maintain them, but they're also a little bit more um, sturdy here in our Minnesota winters. They also come in a variety of colors. Um, they're that great size for, I, for the cool weather. So some resources for you are the American Standard of Perfection. This lists all the, the breeds that are accepted into um, for all poultry breeders. And there's, there's the size and the color and the markings are all listed here in this Standard of Perfection. Um, and what they should look like. Hang on, I gotta, I'll find another picture here for you. So there's just a lot of different birds that you can um, look at and choose. Also, your breed catalogs um, from your hatcheries are going to be another good resource um, for you for looking at the different um, breeds of chickens. And then also, I would recommend, you know, you visit your local county fair that has a poultry show or some of the statewide poultry shows to look and see what the mature birds look like um, and what breed you might want to be considering. So... I've seen this a lot on some of the chat boxes and backyard chickens. They get chickens and they bring them into the porch or the garage, but they don't have their long-term housing set up yet. So start there. What kind of housing do you wanna have for your chickens? Are you gonna, you need to allow three to five square feet per adult, and then you need far less as you get those baby chicks, but think about them and think long-term in this chicken enterprise that you're considering, what kind of housing you're gonna need, how many adult chickens are you gonna have, 
in your backyard or in your small flock and allow three to five square feet per adult. They're gonna need a feeding area with natural light. They're gonna need a roosting area, one and a half to two feet per bird, depending on um, the size. So the leghorns that only get to be about four pounds aren't gonna need quite as much room on that roost as an Orpington will. And you're gonna need bedding, straw, shavings, some corn cobs, something um, to absorb the moisture and the manure that these birds are going to produce. And then you're gonna need an egg nest, one nest for every four birds. Now on my farm, they all seem to like the same nest. And I've got 16 to 20 birds out there and they're all laying in the same nest. As long as they take turns, they're fine. And then you're gonna need a good supply of water that doesn't freeze in the winter. Um, you've got some time to think about that, but clean water is really important uh, for their daily needs. So housing should only be limited by your imagination and by your laws. Some ordinances are really um, strict in that the facade of your chicken coop must match the facade of your home not like in this picture. So that they both have to be white or whatever, the same color. You also would provide a run. So where, how big does that need to be? Um, and you have room for them. If you're gonna keep them penned up in your backyard. And in this case too, they also have a fence if, you, if you're, you're gonna let them roam. You wanna protect your birds from predators. So you're gonna need some kind of screened in area and a place for them to go at night because dogs, fox, and wolves prowl in the, in the night, as well as mink and skunks like to get in to your chicken coop. You'll want to provide comfort, and natural light is helpful. My chicken coop is a refurbed um, garden shed, and I've been able to add some windows in that natural light. And electricity is very helpful, especially if you want them to continue to lay throughout the winter we're gonna to have to extend that daylight by putting a timer on. Chickens um, will slow their progress in laying as the days get shorter. Some people like that natural rest period. And here in the last um, four weeks, my chickens have revitalized and they're laying more eggs than ever. You'll want to provide some kind of a ventilation system. We don't want the humidity to build up into the chicken coop during the winter, which will cause fr frostbite on the chicken's combs. And also in the summer, in the heat of our Minnesota summers, you'll wanna have some ventilation um, or a fan, something that allows the air to move. Um, consider placing your chicken coop in the shady area and out of the direct north wind. So here's some examples of different housing and there's a variety of styles. Keep in mind, you'll want to, if you're gonna have more than three or four chickens, you'll want to make sure that you have enough square footage for all the birds to be in, the, in these coops at night and plenty of room for their chicken nests. And note that all of these have some kind of run attached it, with hardware cloth um, to keep the predators out. So now that you've got your housing plan in place, right? You'll want to prepare for the baby chicks. Consider when you order your chicks from a hatchery or from the um, local co-op that they are vaccinated against coccidiosis. This is a cheap way to keep your birds healthy. Otherwise, make sure that you're using some medicated feed. Provide a clean space, draft free and protected from predators. When you get the baby chicks, you can always make the area smaller um, with cardboard or um, um, plywood panels and then enlarge it as they grow. You'll wanna use bedding, wood shavings and sawdust, um, are good, they're inexpensive to purchase. Um, straw will work, however, you're gonna find yourself cleaning that out a little bit more because it's not quite as absorbent as the wood, wood chips and, this, and 
Um, for the baby chicks too, I would recommend a large flake wood shavings as opposed to sawdust because they might eat too much of the sawdust and um, have some digestive issues. You'll wanna provide a heat source such as a heat lamp. Chicks need to be 90 to 95 degrees in the first week of life. I recommend setting this area up 24 to 48 hours in advance so that the surroundings and the, and the flooring are all nice and warm when you get your chicks. When you get the chicks in, um, then you'll want to reduce the temperature over the next three to four weeks down to 70 degrees. And hopefully the outside temperature has um, increased um, to that temperature. So like right now too, I do have some supplemental heat on my baby chicks that are the four weeks old that are outside um, just to get them through this cold spell here. But when, when the temperatures are in that 65 to 70 degrees, I don't supply any more supplemental heat. And it's recommended that you reduce that five degrees each week they're you typically fully feathered at four weeks with little or no heat. And as I said, except in really cold weather. The infrared bulbs, they only heat the body of the chick, not the air around the bird. So in really cold weather, it might be best to use the incandescent bulb, um, the, the, the clear white ones. And I know some other people are using heat mats and different types of brooders too. And those do work as work well. Make sure you're using the appropriate size feeders and waterers. So two years ago, I was in my local farm store and a family was getting four baby chickens. And the, the, the salesperson oops, was selling her a one gallon feeder or one gallon waterer. And I suggested that they start with the smaller waterer, get them to that four to six to eight weeks changing their water frequently because they'll grow better. And then when they get to be adults, you can use the, the gallon water. A smaller water also reduces the amount of spillage um, and keeps your brooder area a little bit drier than if you were gonna use that gallon water. Or if the gallon water is all you have, I suggest that you don't fill it up all the way, um, but change the water more frequently. When you first get your birds, I suggest too, using room temperature water treated with electrolytes, probiotics, or vitamins. It's, you can buy there a couple of the dollars each packet is, but it's well worth the investment. Follow the directions. You only need a small um, bit of the probiotics in, um, in each gallon of water, but don't overdo the electrolytes either. Um, in this case, too much is, is too much, and you can overstimulate their system, and you'll start losing some birds if they have too many electrolytes. The reason why you want to use room temperature water is um, imagine yourself taking an ice cold glass of, of water. These are small little bodies. They come out of the, they're hatched, and they're temperature is about 90 degrees. So now, if you fed them, you know, close to freezing water, that's 32 degrees. Imagine what happens to their body temperature. It decreases dramatically. And that can cause them issues to slow down. They won't be, uh, they won't drink anymore and they won't be hungry. The other thing I do is I dunk each chick's beak into the water so they know when and where to access it. Another little trick I do is I'll put little marbles in the bottom of that waterer, um, one, to keep the chicks out, and number two, when they start pecking on the, the marbles and drinking the water, that imitates the mother hen and that more chicks will come to the water. Or I'll just take my fingers and tap it on the side of the waterer and the chicks will come. The other thing is, is I wanna make sure that the chicks know where the water is. Water is their most important nutrient. And I try to give them water only for the first two hours so that they are plenty hydrated before I introduce 
the feed to the chicks. If they get too much feed right away without any water, you can get pasty butt. And that's where the poop builds up on the rear end or the vent of the chicken. And that can readily be resolved by washing that area with warm water on a warm cloth, and then making sure that they get plenty of water before you give them their feed. So we'll see if this works here. I'm gonna try this YouTube video. If not, we'll put these in the chat box and you can watch them. Um, so we're gonna set up the space. This is about a minute and a half long. If you're thinking about raising chickens, you need to prepare a space for them upon their arrival. And I've got a couple of batches of chicks that have already arrived. They're over in the pen right next to us. But first of all, what we're gonna do is show you how to set up a pen in preparation for their arrival. So first of all, you need to have it clean. You need to have bedding, peat moss, or pine shavings, or rice holes. Any of those work really well. I would recommend that you do not use paper because paper uh, gets wet and greasy and the slippery and the chicks can fall on it. And that if their legs get spraddled, that is a condition that they won't recover from. You should have at least, um, for a 50 to 100 chicks, you should have at least two one gallon containers. And it's about half full that you can see right now. This needs to be changed a couple of times a day because it does get dirty. You need to have feeders, enough feeder space to make the chicks be comfortable while they eat. Here's a feeder full of uh, prepared feed and it's about 20 to 22% protein. Another thing you need to do in preparing the space is to have heat lamps. The chicks will need about 95 degrees of supplemental heat at their ground level. You'll wanna have a thermometer as well to make sure that you're getting that temperature close to 95 degrees for that first week of their life. You'll also need to make sure that that space is protected from predators. And what I've done is I've put chicken wire all the way around it and tied it on very tightly. And that way we'll keep the, the predators out and keep the chicks in healthy and happy. Okay, so we'll take the lid off. These chicks were vaccinated at the hatchery for a disease called coccidiosis. That is a disease which causes diarrhea and can very quickly kill young chicks. What you can see here is that these chicks have this pink spot on them. And what they do is they spray it on their backs and neck and it absorbs through the skin. The next thing you would wanna do after you open this up, of course, and make sure that they have been vaccinated is that you'll wanna introduce them to, to the water. So all I do is I just put my hands around the body of the chick and I put my thumb behind its head, and then I dunk it in the water. As you're handling the chicks like this, it gives you a chance to look at them and see if there are any chicks that might have health problems of any sort. But they'll wander and they'll peck at everything in here and gradually they'll find the feed sources too. What we're using for the chicks is just a standard starter feed. It has about 20 to 22% protein. It's specially formulated for young chicks. You can see here that it's uh, kind of granulated. It's just a small pieces so that they can peck away at it and it fits just right for them. One thing that's important to remember is that even though these chicks are all fluffy and cute, they can spread disease. It's important that after handling the chicks, you wash your hands well with soapy water before you eat or drink. It's a lot of fun to work with chicks in part because they're really so easy to raise. And in six to eight weeks, you've got fully grown chicks and it's a wonderful thing. Okay, then um, in the interest of time, we'll have you, there's another video there that you can watch on um, the heat lamps. A couple of things in that video to pay attention to is, is um, the feeders were quite full. You want, if you have three or four chickens, it may not be necessary to fill those feeders quite as full um, because feed is your most expensive cost in raising chickens. And it, you don't want it to get moldy. You don't want to get it full of poop and you don't want to get it through full of wood shavings. 
So let's talk about laying hen nutrition. So feeding your baby chicks, as Wayne mentioned in the video, you'll want a starter with about 18% protein. There's a lot of great prepackaged feeds that are available at 18%. If you do not have them vaccinated for coccidiosis or Merrick's, you might want you, you want to feed a medicated feed. At seven to 12 weeks, you'll want to use a starter feed of about 16% protein. So the 18% gets them going, speeds up their growth. Then you kind of want to moderate it um, to have an average growth rate in that week seven to 12. So now they're going to be um, three months old. At four months old or 16 weeks, you'll want a complete feed, um, <coughs> excuse me, that contains that 15 to 17% protein. Then after, when they reach that five month stage, then you'll want to start um, feeding a layer feed. And um, typically, um, chickens can eat forages, they can eat grain and bugs, but I really don't recommend that until they're fully grown. They need two to two and a half to three and a half percent calcium, and that is needed for egg development and for the shell. You can, all, I, I also recommend supplementing crust oyster shells, and that is just the supplemental calcium that's needed for that good egg development. Now your complete feeds may have that in. It's kind of a personal choice, but if you do find yourself um, down the line with weak eggshells, unformed eggshells, you'll want to add some added calcium via the way of oyster shells. The other supplemental uh, ingredient to add is grit. Now this is just ground up cherry stones, small rocks. I try to get my birds on grit at about um, one and a half to two weeks. And this grit, they digest, well, they don't digest it. It goes into the gizzard and it provides that grinding mechanism for the food. And it will help the birds digest their food, absorb the nutrients quicker and grow faster. Um, so that becomes really important to su supply that grit. Sometimes um, free range chickens get enough grit in the gravel and sand that they pick up. But I always try to have um, a supplement of grit and especially in the winter time um, because I don't let my birds free range in the winter. And then I do keep them on, um, on an egg mash or an egg, um, a ration their entire lives. And in the winter time, I supplement some scratch grains for additional carbohydrates. Um, but it's a, they're pretty easy to take care of and um, they've, they've always treated me well with uh, good eggs. So what's the investment? Your baby chicks are gonna cost one to $3 each. Um, your breeding chickens, so if you want a specialty um, baby chick, um, something a little bit more exotic, you're gonna pay $8 or more for those baby chicks. And I will just say, we get breeding chicks here as part of our 4-H project and, and we pay that eight to $12 per baby bird that's one day old. <laughs> so that my sons have um, breeding chickens for the fair. And then some people prefer to buy adult chickens and they can cost um, anywhere um, $15 or more. Um, and depending on the breed and how exotic they are, the more you're gonna pay. And I should add here too, the, those adult chickens, um, sometimes you, you can purchase them um, from people or neighbors or whatever. Um, and sometimes at the county fair, some of the 4-Hers will sell you their adult chickens. So that's kind of just another little source there besides the hatcheries and we'll talk about that too. Um, your feeder can be purchased or made and I'm we haven't gotten that crafty. There's a lot of things out there on the internet. There's um, um, 
these PVC or rain gutter feeders that, that save feed. Um, and you can use a lot of things around your yard or pick them up um, relatively inexpensive to make a feeder. I know um, a large um, five gallon feeder is gonna run you about $46. I did purchase some three gallon waters the other day for $26 a piece on sale. So there is some investment. Um, the waters can be more expensive, especially if you wanna use the nipple waters, um, but you can use buckets um, in the winter time. You can use um, a heated a dog dish if you want. Um, and then remember, your feed is the most expensive. So a 40 pound bag of feed is running right between $10 and $12 a bag. If you're looking at organic feeds, that's gonna cost you twice to three times the amount of a commercial feed. And then of course your ordinance and licensing fees. Some cities require that you get a license and renew every year. Sometimes those fees are $25. And I've heard them being as high as $200 to have four backyard chickens. So you want to check out those ordinances um, if you're thinking about raising um, a small flock or backyard chickens. So where can you purchase your equipment? You can get that at your local farm store. Sometimes your local grain elevator is going to have that. Um, some hardware stores will carry that or they can special order it for you if you're in a more metro location. Um, you can also pick up some good used equipment at farm sales and garage sales. However, the caution there is to be sure to disinfect all the equipment um, before you use it and um, prepare that equipment um, days in advance, not a day ahead of time. Um, and that can be disinfected with just a straight, um, um, with a bleach solution. I think it's one to four ratio um, or one to three bleach to water and disinfect um, your equipment, wash it and then disinfect it. So where can you purchase your chicks? You can get them at the hatcheries, you can get them at farm stores and farm cooperatives, which they will order them and um, the farm store um, will typically have them on hand. Farm cooperatives will order them through a hatchery. They're delivered to your farm cooperative. They call you the day they come in and then um, they want you to come and pick them up. Um, you can also order them through a hatchery and I've given you a couple here that are popular in our area. There are certainly more. There's Murray McMurray's, Stromberg's, um, Hoover's Hatchery, just depends what state that you want to order them from. And then if you're looking for something a little bit more exotic or a specific breed, connect with the Minnesota Poultry Breeders Association. And most of the member, I should say all the members of the Minnesota P Poultry Breeders Association are NPIP. So it's a National Poultry Improvement um, Program where they agree and that they're inspected that they raise their poultry, their baby chicks um, to certain standards that are um, healthy and safe. Um, some of the, some people um, get excited about their chickens and they want their hands to have baby chickens. And um, there's a lot of um, barnyard mixes going on out there. And I would just say, just buyer beware and make sure you know what you're getting um, with those barnyard mixes. Sometimes um, there's a lot of inbreeding and they're not as healthy as they, they could be um, is if you purchase them from an NPIP uh, breeder or from an accredited hatchery.